Okay, so the one thing I wanted to touch on, which is why I've left this bit for last, is points, because I know I haven't really gone into much detail about how to actually do them. So, um, I didn't really do it to begin with, because I wanted to make sure the information I was giving you was correct for one, uh, and two, I wanted to make sure that everything worked the way that I did it before I sort of put it all out there. So, uh, when I mentioned about laying track, um, obviously I mentioned that I laid it all, tacked it down and just sort of drew around it with the, uh, with the permanent marker, which is what I've done there with the point. And then took the little pin vise and made a, uh, a mark where one, the, uh, the actual switches, and two, another little mark for where the uh, frog wire will go. And that, if you've never seen it, it's this little wire here. It is a little bit fragile, so you've got to be careful with it. As you can see there, I've already had to solder it back in because uh, I knocked it out. So yeah, you have got to be a bit careful with that. Now, I'm using electrofrog points, and they are pretty good when they come with instructions, literally just on the packet. And um, obviously there are lots of videos out there which explain how best to use these. Um, so I'm no means going to be giving you any new information that isn't already out there, but just if you are watching this, this is certainly how I've done it. Um, I'm just going to quickly turn that fan off because it's probably quite noisy for you. Okay, so give that a bit of time and that will just cut off in a minute. Um, so, yeah, first of all, mark out where your point's going. And then I've drilled two of these holes. Obviously this one only needs to be a little one. I think that's one and a half mil. I think. Oh, drop the point there, it's not good. I think that's uh, 10 mil. Um, you just literally need enough room for the uh, the switch to be able to move freely in there. Um, and then obviously cut out a piece of cork. I think the fan's gone off now, you probably hear me better. Cut out a piece of cork and then just make the relevant holes as well where you've drilled. Uh, put that to one side. Now, you've got the point here. I'm just gonna try and do this under a bit of better light for you. Where it's not on track and already confusing. There we go. Okay, so this is the point, and there, so you can see it's an electro frog point as the frog is one continuous piece of metal, which is why you have to use these insulating fish plates, which is what I'll touch on in a minute. So, when you get it out of the box, there will be in this bit here. There's already a break in the track, but you can see there where I've, I've already had to cut. There's a little wire that goes across these two. Now, if you're using DCC, you need to cut these wires and then solder a new piece of wire from here to here and here to here. Now, what I do is I trim down this piece of wire because it's quite long when you get it. And I just use the, the cut off in there to solder it. So, look at the instructions on the box. It says there's no need to modify it for DCC use, but I'm going to be using a switchable frog. So, yeah, as it says, cut those two wires, and then uh, you need to solder it from there to there, and there to there. And that is literally just to give you better continuity. So, and then you're not reliant upon the switch blades uh, sorry, helps if I just point the camera where I am. It's, you're not reliant upon the switch blades. So if you imagine you've got positive and negative, or positive and negative, whichever way doesn't matter, and you've got the say positive running across here, that's going across that rail. It will always be on there. That will always be constantly positive, and this rail here will always be constantly negative. And then the switch blades will transfer the power for you. So. You've got a positive, it's connected there, and it'll run down the blade and give you power. And then that's what that little join that you broke would then keep the power all the way up there. Now, that's all well and good, but then your frog um, isn't switchable. And then vice versa, again, if you switch that there, it will transfer the negative down this rail and make your frog negative. However, we've broken those wires, so the frog is dead effectively. This is it's unpowered, um, and then you'll get the power from the uh, your actual switch. So by breaking this, you're stopping the switch blades, 
I'm giving you uh, power around that area and then it's this little wire that will come from your switch and dictate whether that is positive or negative. Now by doing that, these switch blades are then dead because you've cut, you've cut the power there so you're relying on when your uh, train comes over for the, the continuity between the rail and the switch blade which then means if you plan on weathering and stuff it can be a bit difficult because you've got to make sure there's no paint or glue or anything that's going to break that connection so that's where this little wire comes in helpful you're basically transferring power underneath to make this always positive and here this always negative so it doesn't matter on the actual connection between these being perfect they can get dirty grubby and you can even put things in between them but the power will be coming effectively from here and not relying on them being able to touch so that is a very quick uh, and hopefully clear explanation of how the electrophobic points work now obviously touching back on the insulating fish plates as I mentioned this whole area would be dead where you can see the break in just there from there all the way across it's all going to be dead and your switch will effectively be throwing positive or negative to here which means it can change so you don't want continuity because um, this would effectively say be the positive rail and negative so then say when it's coming up this track it needs to make this area negative which means that this rail here which would be the positive would give you a short circuit so you need to insulate there and there, and then um, the power isn't affected so across the rest of the track. So then you would just basically put another set of dropper wires after there. Um, so that's that's why you do that with me. When you buy the older electro frog points, um, and I know this is electro frog, you know, it doesn't look at the underneath is different. Uh, it sort of seems to be an older generation. Um, now, there's no wire to cut and there's no available space to solder. So what I did was actually sort of around the same place. I just took a pair of uh, track cutters and actually took a break in there and there to exactly replicate. I just grabbed this to replicate that break in the track that was already there when the, these ones come out of the factory now so I just literally took a pair of wire cutter, cable cutters or cable cutters, track cutters and broke that and then on the underneath took uh, some of this plastic away and just soldered a bit of thin wire across there so and then obviously the, the, the frog is broken on this one the wires come away just put a, if it isn't there just put another bit of cable coming out of there um, and that's effectively how I did it um, I think I only had to do that on one or two just odd points that I bought um, that weren't part of the big point order I got from hands. Um, but yeah, so if you've got these older points that look a bit different, that's, that's how I did it. Just took a bit of the plastic around and they made me a space to solder across and then took some track cuts and broke it across there. Okay, so I'll quickly just go through how I physically lay this piece. So. Um, just again explain in this particular case you can see you've got a pointer here and as I mentioned the, the frog i.e. the triangle bit here is insulated um, and then carries on so I don't need to do any other insulating other than these, these two bits here so if I just turn this over this part will be going on there so I don't need to do any other insulating at this end um, I'll explain more when I get to the other side that's an okay angle. So we've got it, we've got it drilled, we've got it marked out. Just make sure there's no sort of dust, which there inevitably will be, especially from the cork. Lay the cork in place. Make sure the holes line up. In fact, what I tend to do is push the wire through that hole first, um, and then feed that through the hole in the board and then rotate the cork round, line the hole up. So now I know that my fog wire has gone through uninterrupted and then I can literally just connect the fish plates up. There we 
we go, straight in that time. Uh, and then just from underneath, grab the frog wire, pull that through, just make sure that that's not caught or tight or anything. And then literally just line the, uh, the cork up um, over the top of it, sort of looking down, just making sure, looking through the hole where the, uh, the motor needle would come through, just making sure that I can still see through underneath. So I know that that is all good. Line it up with my, my pen marks. And then take pins. I've already pre uh, sort of pin biced a hole for these. Um, but the, then once you've got it where you'd want to, you just take the pin vise, drop it through, and then uh, push it in. Just put that in there for now. And then another one here. And then just push them in not too far. And that is that's not going anywhere. Just make sure that still moves freely. I'll just put this cosmetic sleeper back in where, where I had it. There. There we go, just for now. Okay, so that is now in there. I'm looking quite happy. I mean, if I show you the underneath, you'll see there's a couple, but that one there is the, uh, the frog wire. And then that is the hole for the motor. You can see from some of the other points where they are as well. Okay, so I just wanted to touch on the cork that I bought. I bought uh, rolls of cork. Uh, they're a metre long. No, don't roll away, please. They're a metre long, and they are one foot wide. I got just 12 rolls of that. I can't remember how much for, but it's quite good. And then all I did was just take a piece of track and uh, run it along the length and then just cut strips out um, and they are basically four centimeters wide and that gives me uh, let's move out of the way there I found that that gives me a perfect width for putting track on and getting that ballast shoulder and obviously for Pico Code 100 track because they're all tracks the same size so four centimetres wide gives me the perfect uh, width for me. Okay so the next thing to do is measure out the track and this is going to be the Freightliner office or sort of siding where the uh, you know, there's going to be some sort of building so I want to have some sort of space, I don't know if you can actually see in the camera here, I want to have some sort of space for a building over here so I'm going to just ignore the cork for now this is just a, it's not flexi track, it's an actual straight bit because I want this just to be tried out as a, as a straight piece. So if I just roughly lay it there, I haven't connected it up, but I've got that piece there and then I've got a piece of flexi track which I'll sort of bend round because of this point. I'll give you a better view of that, sort of like that, and then have sort of a, maybe a servicing area or sort of something. There'll be, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, there'll be sort of like a, an office here and an area for two locos to, to be effectively when not being used or, or something. And this might be some sort of fueling area. I'm not 100% sure, but I wanna give myself some, some space to put something. So I'm thinking about putting just a straight bit there and then bending a bit of flexi around just to match that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got this piece of cork here. And then I will put my straight bit down, take my knife and just roughly cut to the end there. And that's the beauty about this cork, it just goes straight through with no problems and doesn't tear. You get a nice uh, sort of clean edge, obviously as you can with cork, just rub a little bit off and that's uh, it's quite happy with that. So just whack the cork down up line to the next bit there. Connect this bit up here and the uh, insulating fish plates are a pain because they're basically very bendy plastic so you've got to, I find best to try and get the track in that one first and then 
line it up to the, the metal fish plate. Uh, and with that, I've got a better idea of my cork. So again, just showing you that. That is literally all there is to that. And then what I'll do is take my pin vise, it says. I've already got a hole there. And there and there. I don't actually need to drill any holes with this because set track pieces tend to already have them. So I will start at the end so it doesn't move around. Just push that through there. You could use a track hammer, but it's noisy and uh, there's no real need. I can just push it straight through with that and I don't have to then worry about hammering it in too far. So that just holds the cork and the track already quite nicely. And that was quite easy, relatively easy. Take another pin, this time down here. Yeah, and I'll just do one more in the middle. If I can pick up the pin. There's a bit of movement in that cork. You don't really need to, but I'm a bit OCD sometimes, so I might as well. While well, there's a hole already drilled there, put the other one in. There we go. Lovely. And that is, that is it. And I find that then when I glue and ballast, if I ever need to take this up, it will come up a lot easier because the cork isn't glued down to the ply. I mean, although I mentioned before, when I was putting the foam in, that getting the glue up was easy. This just makes it so much easier, especially when you're moving track and then the glue and the ballast will come up and then the track will just literally unpin. And the cork may be reusable, unlikely, but there's probably a better chance of it being re reusable by not gluing it down at this stage. So that is literally it in terms of me laying a bit of track and a point. I'm going to finish that last bit and then uh, I'll update you when it's done. very quick and um, quite happy with that so it gives me a nice bit of working space here and some options and uh, a nice bit of storage so yeah that's uh, that's that for now yeah. um, any questions or advice or anything would be greatly welcome and, uh, and I'll do my best but other than that that is now the track finished laid and there the last bit drying and uh, probably my next video will be on from wiring um, unless there's any other questions but yeah so thanks for watching and see you next time